Greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're going to be reviewing the album Name Stolen by the musical group Project. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the Prague albums out there. But this year, I'm going to give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. Take a deep breath everyone, there's rain all around, it is winter right now, it is, you know, Christmas time, and here around we don't really get any snow, but rain is the best we have, and honestly I enjoy it all the more for it. But yeah, today we're reviewing this album, Name Stolen by Project, and here are some of my favorite bits from this album. <laughs> by the band Anima Mundi. Now, if you might not know how this all relates to today's video, well, I'll tell you the following. Back in that video, I reviewed that album, which was by a band from Cuba, and I was interested to see from which regions of the earth have I listened to progressive rock music throughout the year, and well, I've counted them off, and I came up, I think, with 22 different countries. And little did I know that only a day afterwards, in episode 172, would that list expand to 23. Yes, you see, in episode 172, I reviewed the album Matka Miel and Yedemin by the Finnish band Saima, and that was the first time I encountered any progressive rock. Presumably, yeah, I know that that album is not that progressive technically, and it's more like world music, but never mind, that was the first time I encountered a prog album from Finland. And well, from that point onwards, I really wasn't expecting to encounter any more from that country, and that was all proven wrong when a few days ago I reviewed Wigwam's Fairy Port. And at that moment, I was like, okay, this is the last time we're listening to something from Finland, we can't honestly have yet another Finnish band, but apparently we do, and that's the band we're reviewing today, or technically, as I said, this musical project. You see, the reason I call Project a musical group or a musical project and not really a band is because their labeling is a bit odd. Now, all the information that I'm about to give you about this band is what I've gathered from a few scarce sources, so hopefully it'll be enough. But the thing is, Project were established in Rihimaki, Finland in the year of 1993, and as they started their way, they weren't really a band, but more of an association of musical people that basically were together to elevate each other's works to some extent. But in a different sense, I guess that they also work together to create music. Again, I don't really know and there's not a lot of information, but the fact of the matter is that throughout the 90s, these guys were fairly active, and in the year of 2000, they released an 8-track demo tape, which was called Forest, or technically Project Forest, depends on who you're asking, which was described to be a conceptual type of music, which was described to be some concept music with some degree of orchestration, which is what we might call symphonic prog. Now in the year of 2002, the group itself actually recorded their first studio album, properly at least, and it was called Name Stolen. But the thing is, the name Name Stolen isn't really a name, but more of just a placeholder for what was supposed to be the original name for this project. I still don't really quite get it, but a fact of the matter is probably that they had a lot of their resources or music or projects that they're working on just accessible for everyone, and thus the name of this project was stolen by someone else, so they decided to call this one Name Stolen. Again, I'm not entirely sure, but that's just what I've read online. But to further add to the confusion, yes, this album that was made maybe at max at early 2003 was not released up until 2005. 
alive. And the reason for it is, well, nobody really knows, and again, not enough information about it. But as it stands right now, this album and this band never really kind of broke through in any way, and they were left pretty much obscure up until today, but apparently not obscure enough to avoid getting on the list. Now, this band or group did continue on to create yet another studio album in 2008 called Raising the Skeletons of Fire by Hand, which sounds way more metal than what it probably is. But by that point, they actually changed their name from Project to PPRY. Again, no idea what it means. I've checked the names of the players involved and it doesn't seem like it's an acronym of their name, so I really don't have any clue why that is. But as it stands, it seems like the band hasn't released anything since 2008 and I'm not entirely sure if they're even still active. Now, let's move on to talking about this album, actually. So, I'll tell you this, this album really confused me. I found it to be quite ambiguous in so many senses. On the one hand, it has some really good production on it, but on the other hand, it just feels kind of cheap and childish at times. And on the one hand, you have some really good and well-made vocals, but at the same time, they just sound accented and unrelated. On the one hand, you have these songs that really soar with energies and have some lovely grooves that you really want to get into, and on the other hand, there's just just ambient music that stretches onwards for so long. And the thing is, throughout this entire album, it doesn't seem like they have this one cohesive what you might call project sound. They do go off in many different directions, and despite sounding quite the same, the entire album doesn't feel like it was made continuously, consecutively, and by one singular mind working on it. And the fact of the matter is, towards the end of this album, you actually get to hear them sounding a lot like Cal, which is nowhere near where they started. Now talking about this album and its structures and its songs, this album takes on the peculiar structure of having little songs but some of them are just divided into subsections which are considered as individual tracks. Again, I don't really see the need for this, I think that you can divide one piece into singular subtracks, but still not have them count as individual songs listed on the album. Of course we see that done nowadays many times because, you know, with streaming platforms for music you get added revenue for it, but with this album that was released back in 2005 and made in 2002, I really don't know why this decision was. And just to give you an example, you have a song like Thief, the story which is divided to three parts being Inside, Exile, and Outside, which are all considered to be individual tracks on the album, but yet again they're just seamlessly going through one another, not really being that different. Nevertheless, it seems like this album does try to tell somewhat of a story, and that does fit with the description of this one being somewhat conceptual, but what the story is, I'm not entirely sure. We do have a narrator just narrating around at certain times, but honestly the accentation and the overall goofiness of the narrator sometimes just doesn't really translate well to me, and honestly, speaking of translations, sometimes I don't even know if they're speaking English or something else, it's really quite odd. But the other thing about this album is the types of songs to be found here. As I noted, there are these really pompous, really groovy songs that I personally really enjoyed on here, but then again, most of this album is just made by long, overstretched, not quite improvisational, but very ambient and atmospheric music that is supposedly supposed to take the listener from one spot to another in the musical journey that you're going through, but honestly they just seem kind of redundant and too abundant to say the least, and if I had to compare it to any other album that I do know, I'd have to go with Nude by Camel. Yes, making the Camel comparisons once more. You see, Nude by Camel, what I remember from it is being an album that is mostly filled with just long stretches of music that don't really translate to anything memorable, but then once in a while you get these really nice grooves that you can dance along to until you come back to the long and stretched pieces of music. But as it stands, I think that the tracks that I take from this album as being my favorite have to be Severance's Futile Outside and Inside. Those were three tracks, I just said their names together. And you know what, they're pretty nice, but again, not above a 7 or an 8 individually, and I think that shows of this entire album as a whole. But if you, the viewer right now, are inclined to actually go ahead and listen to this album, I bid you, you know, a great journey, I guess. I don't think that this album really worked out for me as much as it could have, but it might work out for other people. It really depends on what you're expecting from it, I guess. But for now, let's talk about this album's cover. 
So honestly, there's really not a lot that I can say about this cover in particular, but I will tell you a short story or realization that I've come up with throughout this year. So you see, the thing is, one of the first steps that I do when preparing to create a video is going ahead and finding the cover art for the album I'm reviewing because I'll be using it around in many places like the intro and throughout the video. And one of the things that I always try and do is find a really good high resolution cut high resolution quality of the cover to use in the video, but sometimes as it happens and I see a trend with it, the obscurer the album is, it, the harder it is to find a proper cover for it, except if it's to be found on the streaming platforms, which in that case usually you just have a decent enough quality cover to work with. But with an album like this that is found nowhere other than on YouTube, you really only have two versions to work with. There's the 200 by 200 pixel version of this one from the Prague archives, and it's so pixelated I would have never used it. But in digging up, I did manage to find yet another version of this cover that was 500 by 500 pixels, which is not even half than what I like to work with usually. It was severely dark, and it was just cropped so bad. So I did something that I often don't do, but I I took the cover over to Photoshop, I readjusted the lighting, I magnified it, I cropped it again, and that's what I'm using right here next to me. So yes, online this is probably the best version of this cover that you can possibly find. So yeah, overall I think that if I had to put this album on a tier list I'd give it somewhere around a D, maybe a C-, minus. but for what it's worth I'll give it a rating of 6 out of 10. But that's about it guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're gonna be listening to to Trout Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart and his magic band. I've been procrastinating listening to this album and I think I'm gonna do it right now. And yeah, of course, I want to thank my lovely supporters over on Patreon. So thank you so much to Clay Wallen, Rist of Kings, and Lindsay Haycox. You guys are just the best. And if any of you want to support me over on Patreon, you can find the link down in the description or in my about page. But that's about it, guys. Have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye, guys.